Praise God, everybody. Good evening. Greetings to you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us start with a small thanksgiving prayer. Father God, we thank and praise you for your holy written words. Thank and praise you for your goodness and mercy. Thank and praise you for all the love with which you love us and continue to love us. Thank you for forgiving us of all our sins, blotting out all our transgressions and restoring us our walk with Jesus Christ. We thank you for filling us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for quickening us with the power of God and giving us all seeing eyes, hearing ears, receiving heart, expecting spirit. And also, Father, we believe we receive all the benefits which your word promises. Good health, wisdom, strength, guidance, authority, everything what the word promises, we believe we receive that in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Praise God. So last week, we ended in the study of Gospel of John about Jesus refer, referred to and called and established as the Lamb of God. Like we saw all the scriptural reference now eternally, like Revelation last chapter, first verse says, eternally is celebrated, worshipped, and adored as the Lamb of God who is alive eternally for eternity to remind us that we have been eternally set free from the power, authority, influence of Satan and darkness. So anytime you are struggling with things, you remind yourself the Lamb of God has shed his blood for me. That kind of confession in your prayer will give you strength, spiritual strength, to always turn to God and run to God. Because that is the whole idea why Jesus came to restore us back to God like Adam before he sinned in the Garden of Eden. So with that background, today we want to see one important aspect about all this, our salvation, all our blessing, there is a purpose, is to witness to God about God to yourself and about God to others, not just in some words and tracks, but through real experience. So you see, in the Gospel of John, Jesus came, word became flesh, to be a witness for his father. So whole Gospel of John, you will find, I, they questioned him, how can you be your own witness? He says, my, my father is my witness and the works which I do is the second witness. So he came to show the manifested presence of God, the living God, the only God, the true God. And Jesus was the eternal witness, example of the perfect witness for the living God. He's not a witness for religion. He's not a witness for any ritual because he proved through his life. Old Testament, all the laws and sacrifice pointed out for two things. That is, man is a sinner and all the sacrifice he's doing is to get saved. It was pointing out that there needs a perfect sacrifice for which Jesus will come and sacrifice his own life, shed his blood, redeem mankind, past, present, and future forever. So that we see in the gospel already recorded. So Jesus is our witness means he came to manifest, make it real to you, your feeling, your emotion, your mind, and to every human being, sinner as well as non-sinner, the presence and the goodness of God. Jesus did not come to teach the law or rules and regulation, do this, do that, or preserve the tradition, or this or that, nothing. He said a true life has to be followed 
and lived with God for God. Like how the Gospel of John teaches us the basics of our faith toward God and the basis of our faith is Jesus Christ and his word. Same way, as a witness, you are called to witness through you making effort by faith, by partaking the grace of God, that God is real, he answers prayer, he heals bodies and mind, he provides and supplies all of our need, both spiritual, emotional, mental, physical, financial. So Psalm 34 said, Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. So as a Christian, we are called, all of us, we taste here and there something. But the core purpose, if you get this core purpose, I'm telling you, then God's provision for which he created all these things will flow into your life to use it for God's glory and for yourself, which is a prosperity message. But you see, here witnessing Jesus is the first witness. The word became flesh. And throughout the gospel, it talks about Jesus being a witness. Then you find in the same chapter, John the Baptist came. He said, I'm also a witness. I'm here to testify that the person on whom I saw the Holy Spirit descend as, the, as a dove gently, he is the Lamb of God. That's all he said. His preaching was repent, turn to God, come back to the original position. Repent that you are a sinner. He didn't say repent for all your sins or repent that you tell all your sins and get baptized. You read the verses properly. It doesn't say you repent and confess all your sins. That is all. Religious ministers made up that story. If you read the scriptures carefully, he said repent and be baptized. Repent means you turn back to God. And the Hebrew word repent means come to the starting point. What is the starting point? Where Adam walked with God and Adam had no sin and Adam had dominion over all the creation of God, what he created for mankind, not just for Adam. So that is the meaning for repent. And be baptized means you, baptism is to be immersed. Your life is to be so immersed with God. That is what happened when you get born again. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ, not just with his power. With his power, he baptizes you to do his work. Many people, they don't bother to talk about Jesus, though they don't get filled with the Holy Spirit. Getting filled with the Holy Spirit to become a better witness means not just by telling, you know, oh, uh, this small, small testimony to show when you pray, God answers. When you lay hands, God heals the sick. When you command the devil in presence of others, just like that, it leaves. Because those are all, Jesus said, will follow. Those are all the resources given for a believer. In Mark 16 chapter, you can read that. So now you see the second in the Gospel of John, but John the Baptist is this witness recorded there. He witnessed and preached what he proclaimed. Oh, this is the Lamb of God. So you see, you have to understand here, it also, apart, what is the purpose of witnessing? Witnessing is to draw souls to God, which is called soul winning. See, the religious people, denomination, have brought down the soul winning and witnessing into a, some kind of various formulas. Various denomination has got various formulas. So one says, you know, you, you have to do this. You, have got, you are not saved unless you are. I heard people tell me this. Remember my background, I'm a Hindu priest. I didn't hear about all these things until after I became a minister. I saw so many details. Then I understood people are confusing the simplicity of God's truth into complicated religious traditions. So what happened now? They have got formulas. They say, oh, unless you are saved in Billy Graham's meeting, you are not saved person. Or some people say, you have got to 
give this track and you are going to pray the pray and you are going to come to our church, then only you will be saved. Or some people say, you have to join our church, then only you are saved. Some people say, no, you have got to, you know, not only have the tracks and you have to uh, uh, go around in the street corner and tell um, this and that and the way you are trained to be an evangelist. All they put titles. And then they say, oh, this is street evangelism. I'm not against any of that. But we are going to see the simplicity of soul winning through our own life, which I've been doing since so many years. It is doable. It is real. So I'm showing you here, there are three types of soul winning mentioned here in this gospel. And that we need to understand that is as simple as that. And we all are called to do that. So you see, First, we'll read the verses and we'll continue. So today we are going to see an aspect of simplicity of soul winning. And again, soul winning is not just, you know, going far off countries, this, that, everywhere. Soul, what is actually soul winning we are going to see? Because people have confused soul winning, salvation, everything mixed up, religion. And they don't even know what they are doing and they are just, they put fear, they say, oh, they, they are told to ask. Because I've been, I have attended class where they said, go and ask the person, tonight if you die, what will happen to you? Will you go to heaven or will you go to hell? You put fear in people and nobody wants to, honestly, even a dead dog doesn't want to go to hell. And you go and say, if you don't get saved, you know, or you'll go to hell. They are implying that. And out of fear, they repeat after you. And you think you got somebody saved. And that's all nothing. It's a deception. And it is all going to change because very soon Jesus is going to come. And people are going to be saved by seeing your simple faith, my simple faith toward Jesus Christ. And soul willing is going to be so effective. You, you just agree with me and watch this. Because once you understand what God calls soul winning and salvation is different from what the religious Christians say. So now we'll first read the verses here. First chapter, verse 34 onwards, we'll read. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again, in the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus, as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Who oh, this is John the Baptist is repeating again. Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwelleth thou? And he said unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. And the day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was at Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophet did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. And Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and saith unto him, Behold, that Philip called thee, before Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God, thou art the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I, have, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou, thou shalt see greater things than these. 
and he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So now you see, here is, is record looks like it, there is a pattern of soul winning is recorded here. First of all, what is soul winning? What is salvation? Soul winning is nothing but you win a lost soul towards Jesus and he is the savior. Nobody gets saved because you prayed. Nobody gets saved because, you know, we all did something. If we get even one millionth of a credit for somebody's salvation, then that blasphemes God. People are saved only by believing in Jesus Christ. Remember that. That is salvation. You are saved. If people ask, are you saved? Yes. Why are you saved? Then don't start saying, oh, I am saved because I went to Billy Graham's greatest crusade in Atlanta, or I went to so-and-so special church. My father was there. Mother was there. We all belong to that church. And I am saved because grandma prayed. No, you are saved. When people ask, are you saved? You say, yes, I am a believer in Jesus Christ. That is salvation. Through Jesus Christ, everybody is turned back to God, to the original position of having power, authority, and dominion over their own life and surrounding with God's supernatural provision provided spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, financially. All the resources are there, but as a believer, you can learn to exercise your faith by following God by the word of God and through the spirit of God. All these things are available, not just for the church and the minister, but every family in the church. Families make church. Building church, building is not a church. Big, big mega church, they say. They are not mega church, they are mega crowd. Nothing happens there. There was some entertainer comes and sing. After that, you find so much scandal. Entertainer has failed. Singers have failed. And you don't even get a good Christian testimony. Don't be deceived by all those things. I am boldly saying because I have been praying all week, Lord, help me to bring the truth what is here. So first person who got, who were led to the Lord, that is Andrew and John, the two disciples mentioned there, is Andrew and John. John's name is mentioned because John is the one who's writing this passage. So the two disciples who were followers of Jesus Christ heard John preach more than once, oh, behold the Lamb of God. Oh, behold the Lamb of God. When he is repeated, by the time he repeated the second or third time, they heard the preaching. If he is the, he is the Lamb of God and he is the Messiah, let us follow him. Let us submit our life to him. So, first soul was won through preaching. It is not a formula. See, soul can be won different ways. We are going to see in this short passage. First disciples who came to Jesus were Andrew and John through preaching of John. So, the first people who came to Jesus are people who can be, you know, potentially brought for salvation of their life is through preaching. So that you see here. John the Baptist preached, behold the Lamb of God. Two believers believed that. They turned to Jesus. And when they went to Jesus, first thing, what did they say to him? They say, Master, which is interpreted, Rabbi, which is interpreted Master. Master in Hebrew is translated into the same Lord. So you see, whoever called Jesus as Lord, they are open for their salvation. Paul didn't pray a long prayer in Acts, the ninth chapter. He simply said, Lord, what would you have me do? Bible says he's saved. Whosoever shall confess Jesus as Lord is saved. See, it is so simple. There is no need for complicated prayer or anything. So this, when they went and said, Rabbi, which interpreted master means in Hebrews is Lord. And they say, Jesus, where do you live? See, these are all record. This is a translation in English of Eastern culture is also involved here. Truth is truth, but there is an Eastern culture involved here. The whole Bible is in, from the East, not from the West. So as a result, 
Eastern culture is what? They come and say, Master, where are you? He says, come and see. What did they mean? They say, you are our master. We submit ourselves to you. We want to be with you, Jesus. Where do you live? See, that is Eastern people. That is how they talk. Whereas here, when you ask, where do you live? People are trying to find out your address or, you know, uh, they are just trying to locate where the location you live in. That is all Western way of thinking. Eastern way of thinking, you see, they called him master, rabbi. So he, he asked, he said, come and see. That means Jesus is fulfilling what he already said in Gospel of John. Later we'll be studying more. He said, I will not cast anyone who comes unto me. So these two went, Jesus accepted. They said, come to my house, man. That means, see, Jesus is open to anybody who will call him master and submit to him. You can live with him. And the same truth is brought in a different way in John the 14. He said, he who loves me, I will love him. My father will love him. And he who keeps my word, we will love him. My father will love him. We will come and make our abode with him. That means it's... Soul winning and salvation is connected to living together for God and with God. So the first soul winning was happening here by someone's preaching. Then what happens when Peter, Andrew saw, his, the moment he saw, he is touched inside. These are all spiritual things. Andrew saw, he was a fisherman. Andrew saw Jesus and he said, man, this is good. Being around him is good. Why can't you be good? Because Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit, full of power of God, full of love. And before him, when Andrew just saw, just as the atmosphere touched him so much, he said, I must run to my brother Peter. Peter was the most unstable man. He always talked too much. He was emotional. All his character you can see. But so first thing, Andrew taught in his heart, oh, I have met the master. I'm going to go with him. And I already said, I will come and go with you. That's what in Eastern culture they talk. And then Andrew thought, my brother can have better help because he's suffering all the time. He's, he's opening his mouth, getting into trouble, and he can use this. So he runs to Peter and brings him to Jesus. So the second soul winning is done through personal witness. First to the closest person. That means your witness should be, it can be anybody in your family, your brother, sister, husband, wife, cousin, anybody. You do, instead of saying, oh, unless you are saved, you will not go to heaven. That is not the point here. They need Jesus. For their problem, Jesus knows everybody's problem. So they need Jesus. So Andrew took Peter to Jesus. And see, Peter was unstable in the sense he always spoke Anytime he spoke afterwards, he, his, like to say in English, his feet was in his mouth. He would say things and he would see, well, for example, uh, when they said, you know, um, on the supper, uh, Jesus said, tonight I'm going to be betrayed and they are going to kill me, they are going to arrest me. Peter said, even if everybody leaves, I'll be with you. See, he jumped up and said, Jesus, oh, Peter, you are going to be with me. You are the one who is going to deny me publicly three times. See, <coughs> he always says things and gets into trouble. But you see, Jesus, important thing is we may have a lot of weaknesses like Peter. But when Peter was taken to Jesus, something is recorded here. It is important. We have to understand. Jesus called Simon Parjonas, you are Peter, Cephas. From today, I call you Peter like a rock, a stable person, not an emotionally wavering person. So Peter was given the name, not because Jesus didn't like his complicated name, you know, Simon Barjonas. Peter means rock, a stable person. Jesus, like his father, who called Abraham the father of nation by calling him Abraham, calling into existence those things. A man who had no children, he calls him father of nation. Same way Jesus... Exactly, he said, what I see my father do, I do. So here he's saying his father, 
calling into existence. So he called Peter an unstable man, emotionally wavering man, emotionally not stable at all in his action or in his talk. He says, you are the most stable person. And even though it didn't look like that, but Jesus, every time when Peter failed, Peter, Jesus will address Peter, and then Peter will understand, oh, I'm, I'm stable, I'm stable. So much so, when Jesus died and went in heaven, went to heaven in Book of Acts, it is Peter, that's an unstable man, like a rock. First, he won 3,000 to the Lord, then he won 5,000 to the Lord. That is the Peter. So when people come to Jesus, he knows each one's person. So he calls somebody who is so weak, he always addresses them, oh, Peter, he made him stable. And he gives, that is how God addresses. That is why it is important that more than, you know, in the name of ministry, in the name of soul winning, we all want credit for ourselves. No, you bring them to Jesus and Jesus knows their situation and supernaturally he will call a weak person, a, 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 a strong person. He will call a barren woman, a pregnant woman. He will call an unmarried woman. Oh, my wonderful couple come like that because this is how he sees when single people go to Jesus, he sees them as married. And you have to see that. And then instead of begging and all, you see yourself like Jesus sees you. That is why in the scriptures, in the New Testament, it is all God is telling us through Paul, see yourself in him. See yourself complete. See yourself healed. See yourself prosperous. See yourself victorious. That is what it says. Because that is how Jesus sees every believer. Are you all getting this or I'm just simply getting uh, excited? Because this is what is, this is changing many, many of your life. In your family, if a child is having problem, instead of saying, you know, you, you, you go, go, no, you be bold and say, let us pray and take the name of Jesus. Whatever comes by the spirit of God, say a prayer. Let the child know Jesus loves them too. Because Jesus, the Bible says, he knows everything about everybody because your father knows the bible says in the psalm our names are written in the father's hand jesus said in john 4 john 10 he said no one can pluck you out of my father's hand that means father already knows about you so you need to come back to father that is called soul winning Bring people to Jesus, even if they are born again. You don't try to give formula. You don't try to say, you know, Brother Copeland said that, Brother Hagen said that. You bring them to Jesus and let them seek Jesus and you let them know what Jesus tells. Not a preacher. This is what is wrong with Christianity and we are all walking around like we don't have any power. My dear friends, my dear family, my dear family of word of his power, Boys, girls, young man and old woman, please join me in your faith. In this church, you are going to see awesome power of God, awesome demonstration of the signs and wonders which truly belongs to you and me. Unless we understand the simple truth, how soul winning is done, what is salvation, we will be just talking religion. But that is going to stop because I have committed. I want your prayer support. I want to your faith support because we are going to demonstrate, like Paul said, my preaching is not going to be with just man's wisdom it is going to be with demonstration of the power or the power of god in your life so that see i want to see the prosperity in your life i want to see victory in your life i want to see the signs and wonders through that you live long you have got a strong mind you are, you are able to just shake off sickness and disease you are able to boldly say pastor here god is telling us to do this for his great kingdom here is i am god has blessed me here when you listen to god and together we are going to win canada for god we are going to win souls thousands upon souls around the world because that is why this whole study is being done. This is not some kind of weekend service, Frida, I don't have any other work, or you don't have any other work. So the second soul winning was done by personal witnessing because Andrew, he must have gone and witnessed to Peter. Hey, Peter, I saw, we called him Rabbi. Man, there is something about him. That is so awesome. Because see, he, even though it is not recorded, that's what happened. So when Peter came with all his problem, Jesus called him, you are a stable person. 
even though it didn't look like stable, but Peter did become stable. So now the second set of soul winning was done by personal witnessing. So continue to witness. Just don't say, yeah, I am born again. I'm going to church. I'm tithing. I'm giving offering. I like Pastor Jay's message. That's all. No, in your own family, every day, all of us get all kinds of problems. Don't tell me you don't face problem. But when problem comes, you come to Jesus. You come to Jesus by taking your Bible and praying what you are learning. So when you do that, Jesus, for sure, because the scripture after scripture say, you come unto me. If you are tired, you come to me, I'll give you rest. If you want, call me, I'll answer you. If you don't know anything, I'll show you. These are all written in the Bible. It is one thing to quote, another thing to step out and practice. It works for me. Why not? It will work for you. It's not working because I'm some kind of a, some great anointed pastor. I'm anointed all right. I'm great all right. But it is working because I'm a believer, a simple believer. If God says that is enough for me. So Peter was called by Jesus a stable person. So now the second soul winning is you bring people to Jesus. First soul winning through preaching. Preaching should push people to Jesus. When you give testimony, your testimony should be push people to Jesus. Not put your face on the Facebook and say, oh, look at their testimony. No, they should say, God, Jesus did that for them. They, he will do it for me also. That is what is soul winning and witnessing is. So the second, first was soul winning was done by preaching. Second soul winning was done by personal going and telling the closest person. It can be a relative, your friends, maybe your neighbor. It all depends on your personal circumstance. The third soul winning is mentioned there. Nobody witnessed nothing to Philip. Bible says Jesus went to Galilee. So Jesus is looking around for sincere hearts, irrespective of their background. Jesus is looking for people who are seeking truth and seeking a better life. So Philip Jesus saw him in Galilee and told him, Philip, follow me. So Philip said, hey, this man looks all different. Nice he looks. Now, I'm sure the way Jesus said with such love, with, you know, Philip threw everything and started following him. I mean, Jesus never told him, you know, oh, Philip, you better follow me. Otherwise, supposing you die tonight, you will go to hell. Nothing. He simply said, follow me. So Philip followed Jesus. But after he followed Jesus, he enjoyed. See, we simply saying, you know, oh, your presence makes me whole. His presence will make you jump and joyful to tell everybody about the goodness of God, which you have come into contact. That is what is important. And that is what exactly Philip did. Nobody witnessed to him. Personally, Jesus witnessed. But as I heard in America, people say, oh, unless we go and preach, the world is going to dogs, world is going to hell. Unless we preach, you know, um, they will not be saved. Not true. I got saved like that. Somebody working with my wife's company, we were following Catholicism, all religious nuts. They told, you know, we go to a chapel where people pray, people get healed. My, I was very sick, man. Pastor Sarah told me, let us go to that church. So because somebody told, I went. I didn't, I hated Christian. I didn't know anything about gospel or anything. But when I went, see, first, in my case, all the three followed. I went because somebody called me, and the closest person who called me is my wife. But the wife was called by her company colleague. See, he witnessed. He didn't say to my wife, you know, you better bring your husband, otherwise he's going to hell. They don't know I was already in hell. So where is going to hell? So I went. First time, one fellow told all about his problem. He was an American preacher who came there and said, oh, you all give me some money. I am not uh, in New York. Electric bill is costly. Then I said, this fellow, he's a beggar and I'm not going to listen. I made fun and went home. But after some time, see, God did not give up on me. Again, somebody called my wife, you want to come for prayer? So I went. 
This time when I went, one fellow got up and said, what all Jesus can do? Then still I was not convinced. Then God pushed my little daughter and said, she said, go, Jesus will give you something. So when I went, see, somebody close called me, somebody, friend called somebody. Then we went. When I went to the altar, they said, ask me, what is your problem? I said, you said, you are, God is great. If he's great, he should know my problem. See, like Jesus knew Peter and Philip and Nathaniel, Jesus knew Jairaman also. So while they were praying, I met Jesus personally and I got healed first. Then only after one week, I got saved because they said, you have to pray this prayer. As far as I'm concerned, all healing, salvation, everything. When you meet Jesus and I have believed him, that counts it as salvation. But then for the church purpose, we have to say, when did you get saved? What time you got saved? April the 4th, 7th, 7th. No need. The day and time you believe, you are saved. So I, that is how it happened. So now, Philip was witnessed to by Jesus himself. He didn't attend Billy Graham crusade or read tracts or, you know, go and sit at the altar and cry. He just believed Jesus followed him. So following Jesus is also important for us, a believer, to know. It is not enough you get saved. You should continue to follow Jesus Christ. Then the third one, Philip was so happy. He went and found Nathaniel. Nathaniel, he said, hey, Nathaniel, come. I found the Messiah. I found him. So Nathaniel, like any other religious person, he said, oh, he was, was criticizing. Oh, anything good can come from, you know, this place is it recorded like that. He wants to show that he knows the scripture. He wants to verify, does the scripture say, is it from this place, the Messiah is going to come? See, instead of arguing, instead of saying, okay, okay, Nathaniel, let me pray with you. You are, you are asking too many complicated questions. Let me pray for you, my brother. And he didn't start praying. Nathaniel simply said, Philip simply said to Nathaniel, come, you come and see. What Jesus told Philip, he told Nathaniel, come and see. So when he went, Nathaniel went, see Nathaniel being a critical man, he was critical from the man's point of view. But when Jesus saw him, Jesus tells him, here is a man who comes in whom there is no guile. That means he's so innocent and very nice man, but in his action, he was not nice. So what is what happens when you come to God, he transforms each one's character to reflect his goodness. And that is what happened to Nathaniel. So Nathaniel was one to the Lord by witness of Philip. So soul winning is, remember, soul winning is nothing but anytime, even when you are a believer, you may be saved. And soul winning is not just you have to get, graduate from a Bible school or you have got to have all this big background. Simply calling your own family member, your children, your brother, sister. Come on, man, let us spend five, time, five minutes. Let us go to God and start praying, Father, in the name of Jesus. Because if you are regularly reading the Bible, you may not go by any of your feeling. But remember, the moment you take the name of Jesus in your lips, the heavens open, they are ready to hear your prayer, and you don't wait for evidence. Always believe that your prayer is answered. You will find your loved ones get answers, your loved ones get healed, your loved ones' needs are met. That is how soul winning and salvation goes together. Did anybody get tonight anything? All right. Now, Bill, I wanted to go to the next chapter, but the Spirit of God says no fine-tune this because I want every one of you to remember each one of you is a witness for Jesus Christ. Each one of you is called a soul winner. Soul is one for the Lord. Don't complicate, oh, soul winner means oh, we are 100, 1 billion soul. That's all unnecessary number calculation. God doesn't care about it. Soul winning is bringing people to Jesus meeting their needs, getting them answers through Jesus. You may pray, but the answer came from Jesus. You may lay hands, the healing came from Jesus. You may seek on their behalf, 
but they got the deliverance from Jesus. You and I are just instruments. Like Jesus himself says, I am just an instrument for my father. Remember that and be bold. Anytime, be bold. I've been practicing this in my own family. It has been awesome, wonderful. Anything and everything. Say, come on, come on, let's, let's stop everything. Let us ask Jesus. And you get many of the instant answers. You say, what is that? Listen, you taste and see what I'm telling you. I am not here to tell you because some of the prayers, I pray and God answers. It may look silly for you, but for me, it is awesome because God is real. That is the whole idea of witnessing is. So, Remember and confess with me, say to me, in the name of Jesus, I am a believer and not a doubter. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. I am born again and redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ. I belong to God and I am created, called, chosen, and anointed to be a witness for my Lord Jesus Christ. And my purpose in life is to bring souls for their need to be met through my Lord Jesus Christ. That is called soul winning. And when they get their answers, when they also believe in Jesus Christ, they also enjoy the salva salvation of God. That is what salvation is. Thank you, Father for calling me, choosing me, and giving me opportunities in life to shine your life through my life. Thank you for making me a good witness. And to be a witness, I thank you for continuously giving me wonderful experience with you in Jesus' name. You believe that, put both your hand, praise God, and be glad. More we'll learn next week. I hope everybody got something. This is what I saw in this passage. I'm so excited. You boldly tell one another, let us go to Jesus. Because the name of Jesus is power of God, the manifested presence of God, and the very love and compassion of God overflows when you take that name in your mouth. For you as well as one another.